Welcome to my unboxing and first look at the MSI GeForce GTX 670 OC. So this is an overclocked version of this already very fast, very, well, overclockable, hence the, uh, the factory overclocked editions of the card that are available at launch. GPU. So this is using the GK104 GPU from NVIDIA, which is the same one that is used in their flagship single GPU card, the GTX 680, but the only difference is they've cut back some of the CUDA cores and they have... that's about it. They dialed back the frequency a little bit, but you look at guys like MSI going and releasing 1.045 gigahertz graphics cards and the frequency isn't dialed back at all, so... What, what, what am I going to say, right? Because that's the only difference. The, uh, the memory is still clocked at 6 gigahertz, and it is still using a 256-bit bus, which is the first time we've seen that in quite a while. I mean, GTX uh, 570 had the memory bus cut back from the 580. The 470 had the memory bus cut back from the 480. And then even going back to the 260 was cut back from the... Uh, from the 280. So yeah, this is yeah, this is like a totally totally new thing for us to see that Nvidia didn't do that. Moving right along, GPU boost is supported, which means that it will dynamically adjust the clock speed of your graphics card according to the power and heat attributes that it is aiming for. So whatever targets, it'll just ramp things up according to how much headroom it has left. This guy comes with a DVI to VGA adapter. Two dual Molex to single PCIe 6-pin adapters, a driver disc, which you shouldn't use, just download the latest, as well as a... whatever this is. Quick Start Guide! And then another Quick Start Guide. Awesome. This is a really old character. I don't think they've used that one since, like, G4 6000 series. So this, this guide must be uh, sort of recycled here. But, you know, there's no point. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? New graphics card doesn't necessarily mean the rules for plugging in a PCI Express card change. Am I right? Okay, so let's get this baby opened up. I can already see some trademark MSI stuff going on over here. There are little blue covers for the uh, connectors as well as the uh, display ports and the ports that you connect to displays that are not called DisplayPort, uh, as well as their also somewhat trademark almost black PCB, which you'll see on like other MSI products such as the GTX 560 Ti Hawk. See? Not quite black, but still looks really slick in your case. I'm just going to put that aside for now. Um, what am I missing here? Right. Uh, two gigs, right. It has two gigs of memory, which means that even if you're running a surround configuration, you should still be okay. I mean, yeah, the Radeon HD7950, if you're, especially if you're running three high-resolution displays, might perform a little bit better in your given game, but you're going to be missing the 3D Vision surround support, as well as PhysX and all the other exclusive NVIDIA technologies, including their TXAA modes, which give you better image quality, but with a lesser performance hit compared to traditional multi-sampling anti-aliasing, as well as adaptive V-Sync, which gives you, especially in those multi-display configurations, this can be a big problem, because V-Sync, if you go above the display, uh, above the refresh rate of your monitor, will cause tearing, which means that instead of being aligned, things will look kind of like this, in the middle of your screen, and if you go below, it has to use a multiple of, or a, um, a factor of your refresh rate. So that means if you are capable of running at 55 FPS, it'll chalk you all the way down to 30 because you're running VSync. So it'll turn it, adaptive VSync turns it on when you're up there and off when you're down here so you can get the most out of your graphics card. Three plus one displays are supported, so we've got, yeah. HDMI, eh, display port, and then two DVI ports. So you can run three of those in 3D Vision Surround and then one auxiliary display for, you know, system monitoring utilities or whatever else that you need to show on that fourth display. So that is right, up to four displays. 4K monitor support as well as HDMI 1.4a gives you 3D over HDMI. 
as well as a very efficient PCB design. So you can see NVIDIA's reference design, which is what this card's using, even though it is factory overclocked, so it is slightly non-reference, is a very, very short PCB, and NVIDIA has relocated the power delivery to the other side of the GPU, which is something that we haven't really seen before, except on, you know, dual GPU cards where they don't really have a choice and they have to kind of refinagle things uh, pretty differently compared to a single GPU card. Multiple SLI connectors means we are compatible with multi-way SLI configurations and we are also using PCI Express 3.0. The card is also, as you can clearly see, fully capable of supporting up to four gigs of memory without any difficulty. So that would be a great configuration. Two four gig cards with a three monitor setup means you're going to have enough memory to store all of the textures that you need, as well as the uber horsepower that you need from the GPUs themselves in order to drive that kind of a resolution. So. For anyone considering an SLI configuration for the GTX 670, I would definitely recommend going with the 4 gig cards if you're going to have multiple monitors or even one high resolution monitor such as that one. It's a 30 inch monitor running at 2560 by 1600. I think that pretty much covers it. This card uses a blower design, it's a reference card, so almost all of the heat that is accumulated here and cooled here is going to be exhausted out the back of the case. Much like the 680, NVIDIA has redesigned things somewhat in order to give you more dead space between the IO shield as, and the heatsink itself. So that just gives you slightly better airflow out the back of the cart. And just as like a quick length comparison, it's just a little shorter than a GTX 680. Although if you had a smaller heatsink on it, or you water cool it or something, I bet you could fit this in a very, very small case without any difficulty whatsoever, which is really cool. I think that pretty much wraps it up. So what is it? It's a cheaper, slightly less powerful, although overclockable to the point where you could get similar performance to a 680 card. It's starting to look like a pretty darn good value. Thank you for checking out my unboxing of the MSI GTX 670 OC 2GB graphics card on Linus Tech Tips, and don't forget to subscribe.